all my friends look at me and can you cut my hair? All my uh, my my brothers, can you cut my hair today? I have a party. I'm not a barber. I just have have these clippers from Walmart back then, and I start cutting hair back then uh, of my family and my friends. And one day, I had this barber that used to cut my hair in Framingham, Massachusetts. And back then, I used to live in Boston. I used to drive like 30 minutes to cut my hair. You see, guys, whoever, cli- whatever clients there, whoever are watching this podcast as a client, you know, I drove like over 30 minutes to cut my hair. So now I understand why people drive like an hour or even more, three hours to cut the hair with us, with me. And what was his name, the barber's name? Pito, Pito Shout Navarra. Out Pito. Shout out to Pito. Pito, thank you very, thank you very much Wait, for the support. For the, <laughs> thank you for the support, everything the, that you gave, you helped me, everything. The first pair of clippers, Pito gave it to me because one day I was sitting in his chair, cutting my hair. I mentioned that I was cutting my, my uh, friends and my brothers in a bathroom. And I was, I remember I was his last client of the day. It was really late at 9, 9 30, 10 p.m. Uh, the barbershop called Grandes Ligas Barbershop. Papalot, Papalotti used to be the owner. He, he is a, a Dominican guy, really an amazing guy. Now he don't want that, that barbershop. He owns uh, another barbershop in Framingham. And Pito didn't have a car back then. He, he was going through a, a tough situation too. He had a kid, divorce, and all that stuff. And I gave him a lift, and he told me when when I arrived to his house, he told me, hold hold on one second. And he went up, he climbed the stairs, went up, got a pair of clippers, a pair of uh, rustic uh, shears, gave it to me and told me, now this is your opportunity to ask Papalotti, Papalotti to work with us, you know, have an opportunity to work at Grandes Ligas. I remember I was asked, I wasn't a professional. I didn't have license back then. And I asked Papa Lot many times. I believe it was like around 14, 15 times. He always reject because, of course, I didn't have, I didn't have license. He always asked if I was a barber. Right? I, I, I was telling the truth. I, I wasn't a barber, but I wanted an opportunity. Finally, he gave me this opportunity. I was, I was renting a chair, paying $100. Every Saturday, without making any any money, I was paying for, out of my pocket. Pito was the one that was there, and I was sitting uh, in the uh, waiting area and watching all the barbers cutting. And once I had the opportunity, and I asked Pito, I was like shattering Pito right there and asking how he cuts those amazing Puerto Rican fades. Pito, it is a Puerto Rican. And I was sharing him and watching him. Can he was I the make most a comment. Hold on, but he I don't was cut you. he was the he was the most uh, barber required in the barber shop back then. He was the best of the whole team. He was there, the right? best of the whole team. He was the busiest. I was learning from him constantly, and I started bringing uh, kids from high school, my f- my really good friends, my family members. And Peter was there teaching me and guiding me, so I, I'm I'm blessed to have the opportunity. The have comment I want to make is regarding that that um, I noticed hearing stories from different barbers that there was always someone that supported them that actually tell them you should do this, you're good at it, or support them to give them or the teach first them. Step. Like you, Pete, Peter gave you the tools. Peter was like, "Come work here." He was your biggest supporter at the time. And one thing you shared with me is that people surrounding you, your friends, your family, your girlfriend at the time, no one wanted you to be a barber. <laughs> no one said, hey, go do it. And then Pito was that person. And Papalochi also was the person that gave you your first job opportunity, even though you had no experience and no license because we're not supposed to work without a license, right? And he still gave you that chance that completely changed your life forever. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that opportunity. And every story you hear from a barber, there was always that person. That was the person that gave them the first opportunity or gave them the first motivation and support to become barbers. 